Hi everyone. The purpose of this video is to explain how to distinguish a linear differential equation from a nonlinear one. We shall find out that there are several shades of nonlinearity and how to tell between the different shades. This is important because classification tells you the difficulty associated with a given ODE or PDE. Generally, one expects an easy ride with a linear equation, as long as the dimensions are not too many. But little is known about nonlinear equations, though there are some special types of nonlinear equations that have been solved. To give you an example, most of the basic problems studied in mathematics and physics are linear. This is the result of mathematical idealization created by the simplifying assumptions. For example, in mathematical finance, the Black-Scholes assumes that there are no transaction costs or other frictions, so they get a linear PDE. But if one tries to incorporate transaction costs into the model, then one ends up with a nonlinear PDE. Let's start with some simple example. Remember the definition of a linear function or straight line. This function, in its current form, won't be considered linear as per the algebra definition of linear operator. Remember, the definition of a linear operator, it preserves addition and multiplication by scalar. So the straight line with intercept is actually a combination of a linear transformation plus translation. The technical name for the combination is affine function as we saw in the Heston video. Ignoring the translation, we have a linear operator. Same thinking is applied when classifying the differential equation into linear versus nonlinear. We focus on the operator part of the differential equation and apply this very same test, but to the unknown function and its derivatives. Let's go through a few examples. We can break down the linear operator definition into its two constituents, addition and multiplication by scalar. For an easy example, let's quickly see that the derivative is a linear operator. Let's consider the second partial derivative. We know the derivative of the sum of two functions is the sum of their derivatives. So that is the first condition ticked. And we know we can take a constant out of the derivative. So that's the second condition ticked as well. And we conclude that the derivative is a linear operator. We can easily verify that the sum of, say, two partial derivatives is also a linear operator by following the steps we just went through. But let's move to a slightly complicated case. Let's say we have this differential equation. So we just take the parts that contain the function and its derivatives as the operator, and then write the differential equation in the operator form. Remember in the previous video, we said that this is an alternative way to represent a differential equation? Now, if we apply the test, we will see this is a nonlinear operator because square does not preserve addition. Remember, a plus b squared equals a squared plus b squared plus 2 times a times b. So the 2ab is extra due to nonlinearity, and we conclude this is a nonlinear PDE. So we have very little to check in order to tell whether an equation is linear. We simply have to check that the terms containing the function and its derivatives are linear. Let's go through the examples that we have seen before and we will then introduce the various shades of nonlinearity. Remember this second order ODE we saw when solving the diffusion equation. Let's highlight the function and its derivative. They all appear in linear form. So this is a linear differential equation. And let's also see the constant coefficient diffusion or heat equation. Highlighting the two derivatives, we see the constant coefficient version of the diffusion equation is linear. For an obvious example, let's see the first order linear equation in its standard form. So we can easily see the equation is linear. 
And for an example of a nonlinear ODE, let's check the Riccati differential equation. Now, the unknown function has been raised to the power of 2, so this is a nonlinear equation. If we had sine of y instead of to the power of 2, would this equation be classified as linear or nonlinear? In either case, this is mild nonlinearity in the scheme of things. So mild is classified as almost linear or semi linear. For a PDE example of a semi linear equation, remember the reaction diffusion equation we saw in the meta population models video. So that is an example of a semi linear PDE. The more challenging nonlinear cases are the ones in which the equation is nonlinear in the highest order term. Let's bring back the transport equation that is used in modelling a lot of the phenomena involving transport. So you see the equation is nonlinear because the coefficient of the derivative term depends on the unknown function. So if you take this and then check it against the definition of linear operator, you will see that the sides don't equal because of the cross terms, so the equation is nonlinear. However, nonlinearity can get worse, and hence this equation is called quasi linear. It is nonlinear, but not fully nonlinear, as we shall see. The fully nonlinear equations are the ones which are nonlinear in the highest derivative term. So here is an example of a first order fully nonlinear equation that we saw before. It goes by the name Iconal equation. And an interesting example of the use of this model is a sand heap. So imagine you can't go to the beach because of the lockdown, but you ordered some sand for home delivery. And then you don't know what to do with the sand, so you poured it onto a table. As you can imagine, you will eventually get to a point where pouring any more sand will just go to the floor. And this equation is rarely derived using the elevation of the sand particles in such an equilibrium situation. You can see it is kind of steady state because we don't have derivatives with respect to time. If you prefer money to sand, then remember the Black-Scholes PDE. It is a linear PDE as you can see. But now, if one incorporates transaction costs into the delta hedging, then one gets the Leland equation. You can see the coefficient of the highest derivative depends on the highest derivative, so the equation is fully nonlinear. Let's go through a simple example so that we don't forget how to tell the different shades of nonlinearity. Let's consider a first order PDE in two variables. So we have the three terms containing the function and its two derivatives. And we assume the equation is homogeneous, so that is why the right hand is zero. Replacing zero by a function of the two variables won't make any difference. In the simple case, the equations will be linear in the unknown function and the two derivatives. This will be the case if the coefficients are constants or functions of just the two independent variables. This is a linear PDE in two variables. Let's make a copy of this equation and assume the coefficients of u depends on u, whereas the coefficients of the two derivatives are just functions of x and y. So the equation is nonlinear in the unknown function. But since the highest derivatives terms are linear, we call it semilinear. Now, assume the coefficients of the derivatives depend on u. And this is now quasi-linear. And if the coefficients of either the derivatives were to depend on the derivatives, then the equation will be nonlinear in the highest derivative. And this is then the fully nonlinear equation. Exercise time? We saw Black Scholes PDE is linear. How about the Heston stochastic volatility model PDE?
Now, how about the local stochastic volatility model? Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the next.